Hello and welcome back to CMC 121. This is a video over the 3.5 notes and we're going to be talking about rational functions and their graphs. Now before I talk about rational functions and their graphs, uh, let's just talk about what a rational function is. A rational function is a function in fraction form. Okay, so it's a function in fraction form. All right. And these are some interesting graphs. Um, they're a little bit difficult, but, you know, if you know what you're doing, that's really not too bad. So the first thing I want to do uh, is talk about the domains of rational functions, okay? But before I do that, I have to talk about uh, vertical asymptotes, all right? So the vertical asymptotes are correlated with domains of rational functions. So let's do this, all right? Let's just think of an example. Um, let me just graph this, f of x equals 1 over x. This is your simplest, um, uh, you know, rational function, okay? And the graph looks like this. Here's your y-axis, here's your x-axis, and your graph is going to do this. All right, it's going to go like that, and it's going to go like this, okay? And I've got two things here, okay? The line here the y-axis is a vertical asymptote, okay? And what that means is that the <coughs> graph on either side will approach the y-axis but never touch, okay? So it'll get infinitely close to this, but it'll never touch. Okay, the other thing that we have on this is a horizontal asymptote, all right? And that's going to be right here. All right, so a horizontal asymptote. Okay, and so, you know, that same thing. This graph is going to get infinitely close to the x-axis, but it will never touch. Same thing over here as x approaches negative infinity. It'll get infinitely close to this uh, line, but it'll never touch, okay? So this is like the basic... <coughs> Uh, rational function that we have, okay? We call this a parent function, all right? So it's important that we know what this graph looks like. This is the most basic one. And I want to talk about how we get the vertical asymptote, okay? We'll talk about horizontal asymptotes um, in a second, but I want to talk about the vertical asymptote because that's going to help us generate the domain of this, okay? So the vertical asymptote occurs... when the denominator is zero, okay? Denominator is zero. And so what that means is I want to say that, you know, I, I take my denominator, so how I do that, how I figure out where this occurs is I set my denominator equal to zero, okay? So I set denominator equal to zero and solve, okay? So what I would do here is I would take my denominator, which is just simply x, okay, and I set x equal to zero. Now, I don't have to do anything here, but when I set x equal to zero, this gives me my vertical asymptote, okay? And that's how I get this line right here, x equals zero, is a vertical line through zero, okay? Just so happens to be the y-axis, all right? So then what that does is it allows us to calculate our domain, okay? So our domain here is um, all real numbers except x can't equal zero. All right? And another way we could say that in interval notation is we could say that this goes from negative infinity to zero, unioned with zero to positive infinity, okay? And what that says is that all these numbers, um, you know, all the values pretty much accept zero, okay? All the numbers leading up to zero, we have points. All the numbers after zero, we have points, but not at zero, okay? And that's undefined. All right, so now let's talk about, let me give you another example. Okay, let me come over here, okay, 
And let's look at this. Let's say you have the function f of x is equal to x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 4. Okay. Now this graph is a little bit more complicated than the other graph. All right. So I've got this binomial x plus 2 and I've got x squared minus 4. First thing I want to do in order for us to uh, figure out how this all works is I want to do this. All right. f of x is equal to x plus 2. I want to factor my denominator. Okay. First step. Factor everything, see what factors you have, and x squared minus 4 is going to factor to x plus 2 times x minus 2, okay? So, in order for us to figure out our domain, we need to figure out what makes our denominator 0. So, I'm going to set each of my <coughs> components here, x plus 2 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0, okay? So if I subtract 2 from both sides, I'm going to get x equals negative 2. If I add 2 to both sides, I'm going to get x equals positive 2. So these values make my denominator 0. So these make denominator, denominator 0, all right? So this will help us figure out what our domain is, okay? So our domain is going to be, you can say, all real numbers except x cannot equal negative 2 or 2, okay? You could also put this in interval notation, and you could say this goes from negative infinity to negative 2, okay? Union that with negative 2 to 2. And we're going to union that with uh, 2 to positive infinity. Okay, so you can say it that way too. Now, that's just our domain. What we need to figure out is our vertical asymptotes. And there's a trick to this. Okay, so vertical asymptotes, yes, they occur when the denominator is 0. However, the only one we have is at x equals 2. Okay, here's the reason. The reason is, is that the x plus 2 factors divide out. What that gives us, so if factors divide out, <clears throat> then you have a whole. Okay? And that's what we've got. Okay, so the only vertical asymptote we have is at x equals 2. Now, I have a whole at x equals negative 2. Okay? And that's the idea. All right, now, let's talk about the horizontal asymptote. Now, over here, <clears throat> we've got three options. So I'm going to write horizontal asymptote. Okay, and I'm going to use HA for short. All right, so if the degree in my numerator is small, <coughs> divided by the degree in my denominator is big, then my horizontal asymptote is going to occur at the line... Um, y equals 0, okay? If my degree is the same as the degree down below, okay, then my horizontal asymptote is going to occur. So horizontal asymptote is going to be the ratio of leading coefficients. Okay? So if I go up here and try to find the horizontal asymptote of this function, what I want to do is, is look at my degrees, okay? And, I, and, and the degree is your largest exponent. So if I wanted to find my horizontal asymptote here, okay, I would take the degree of my top, which is 1, divided by the degree down below, which is 2, okay? So because my degree up here is small over big, my horizontal asymptote is going to be at the line... Okay, 
is at the line y equals 0. All right, so I'm going to pop this uh, function into Desmos real quick so you guys can see how this works. Okay, so I've graphed that, and let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, what, what I notice here is that I have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 2. Okay, notice that that's what happens at x equals 2. Okay, that's my vertical asymptote. Notice what happens at negative 2. Okay, I have a hole at x equals negative 2. Okay, remember that's where my factor is divided out. Okay, look at where you also have a horizontal asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote occurs at the line y equals 0. Okay. So all these things can be found algebraically, and these are all just pieces of information that we should know. Okay, Use Desmos to help with this um, as far as you know, going through these problems. So in this one, you know, you got to find all you're doing is finding the domain of each rational function. Okay, So set your denominators equal to 0. Um, here it says find the vertical asymptotes. Okay, So be careful with holes. All right? Um, you, there are some where you might not have any, okay, and that's that's all right, okay. Um, and then down here, this one says find horizontal asymptotes, okay. If you know what you're doing, this is pretty easy, okay. The other thing I didn't talk about with horizontal asymptotes is this, okay. So let's go here. Uh, if your degree is big up top over the degree is small down below, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's the last part of this that I needed to talk about. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the next page. Okay, on this page, what I want you guys to do is to graph these. All right, so use all those pieces of information. Uh, use Desmos to help you out. Um, and yeah, uh, the one thing that you can do, you know, the one thing I do want to talk about here is your x-intercepts and your y-intercept, okay? For your x-intercept, okay, you need, you need to set your numerator equal to zero and solve, okay? For your y-intercept, you need to let x equal zero and evaluate, okay? And the numbers that are left over is what's going to give you uh, a y-intercept. You may have an x-intercept. You may not. You may have a y-intercept. You may not. So go through all those other things. Find your asymptotes. Uh, utilize your domain. See if things divide out. Uh, if they do, that's great. If not, I wouldn't worry about it. So uh, please get started on this, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.